Heidi ho my peeps and bless me for I have sinned. I have so many things to confess tonight. Uh, I don't even know where to freaking start. Um, I think I'll start with the fact that I'm eating a Subway sandwich in the bathtub. Hello! I'm not sure what it is. My husband got it for me. I'm sure he's going to love it. Okay, more carbs I do not need. Another thing I have to confess is how filthy my bathroom is. I haven't been home in like three days. So um, I walked into kind of a mess. You know how men are. I mean, it was just crazy. Um, what else do I have to confess? Okay, I'm reading lots and lots of, you know, pulp fiction, cheap bestseller novels to keep my mind occupied. Well, and that one I just dropped on the floor, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to lean back in this very hot tub. Another thing I have to confess is that today, oh my God, that feels good. Um, today, when my mother was alone in the emergency room, she'd been there since yesterday afternoon at four, long around noon, I left her side and I went and got my toenails done. Purple. They match my glasses. I felt so guilty the whole time I was away from her. Knowing that she was lying there in pain, not getting somebody to get her up to the commode chair as often as she needed it. All of that sort of thing. But I swear to you, if I didn't get a pedicure today, I was going to go crazy. I was sporting the same glittery red pedicure that I got before Christmas, all right? That is how old my pedicure was. And I had these long, crusty, Tyrannosaurus Rex claws where my beautiful toenails were supposed to be. And they kept catching the blanket. Don't you hate that? You know, you're stretching out in your bed. Oh, it's time to go to sleep. And you feel this catch, catch, snag, snag, snag all the way down your cheap-ass polyester fluffy blanket and you're like oh god I should just get up and cut the damn things just cut them right now but you say to yourself no I really want to get a pedicure right and if I cut them then that's gonna sort of take away from the excitement of getting the pedicure and having somebody else cut your toenails for you so I was really um I was really conflicted for a long time so I snuck away and left my poor mother and got my pedicure, then I rushed back and spent the rest of the day sitting with her. Um, okay, so she came home Friday after being in the hospital for a week with a pneumothorax and a pleural effusion. I told you guys that, but um, she was okay the first night. Second day, she was a little bit shaky. By the third day, I was scared. So I waited till the afternoon till I could really hear her wheezing. And I thought, okay, I can't wait any longer. Called an ambulance, got her back into ER. And she's been there ever since. She's been in ER since yesterday afternoon around 4. And they checked her out and said, you know what? There's really not much we can do. She hasn't built up any more fluid in her lung. She really needs to just go home or go to skilled nursing and try to, you know, try to get better. And so, so they're trying to find a bed at a rehab place so that she can spend one or two weeks, maybe up to three weeks, doing physical therapy every day to try to get herself back on her feet. So, um, another thing I have to confess is that I am relieved about that because that means I get to have some time to myself again which I feel horribly guilty about um I this is okay I'm lying in my bathtub right now I haven't this is the first time I've been home in three days I only had one shower in those three days I would have had two showers but when I was over at Grant's dad's house and we were three quarters of the way through working you know, packing stuff up and going through stuff. And I'm just filthy. I, I was wearing the clothes I had worn all day before and slept in that night and then worked and sweat in. And I was just feeling gross and my hair was just filthy and I just felt horrible and I smelled awful. And I was like, you guys, you go to lunch. I'm going to stay here and take a shower and rest 
So the three of them went off to lunch. I turned on the shower. No hot water. No hot water. No hot water. I go to another shower thinking maybe it was just that bathroom. Nope, no hot water. Turns out they forgot to turn on the hot water. So I didn't get a shower. I had to put my stinky clothes back on. It was just... Uh, of course, I kind of swabbed myself down, but that's not the same thing as a shower or clean clothes. So, I I didn't. I was denied my shower. Then I went home, went back to my mom's, and I was up with her most of the night. Still didn't get a shower. Next day, I had to run and go do something. Still didn't get a shower. Then I had to take her to the emergency room. Still didn't get a shower. Um. So, I cannot tell you how good it feels to be in this bathtub right now. I mean, I just can loll around in here all night. Just keep putting hot water in, letting the cool water back out, and just, just flop around as happy as a mermaid in the ocean. So, um, my confessions tonight are confessions of guilt, feeling guilty, um, my mom is so frightened by being sick because she can't remember why she's sick. You know, she'll some, sometimes she'll look at me with this look and she'll say, Cheryl, did I have cancer? I can't even remember that she had cancer and that she went through cancer treatments. And so I explained to her, yes, mom, you did, but you're doing fine now and blah, blah, blah. You know, try to make her feel better. Um, she'll... She'll look at me and she'll say, I'm so sick. I'm dying. And I'm like, Mama, you're not dying. And you're not exactly sick either. You aspirated some food, blew a hole in your lung. Now you've got fluid that they had to drain off. <coughs> Technically, you're not sick. Technically, you're injured. There's a difference. And I said, you're not dying. Your vitals are great. Your heart's fine. There's nothing wrong with your kidneys. You're doing fine. You just need to recover from this injury that you had. And that doesn't, I mean, that rattles around in her head a little bit, but it doesn't really make sense because in her mind, pain plus hospital equals death. That's, that's what she knows about pain and hospitals. Um, my mom has been unbelievably healthy most of her life. Hasn't been in and out of hospitals, hasn't had a lot of, you know, medical issues. She's always been slender and into health food and exercising. Unfortunately, she smoked, which has brought us to this situation. But in all other respects, she's in good health. So... Now that she has a little bit of dementia and, sh and her short-term memory is not any good, now she can't put any of this together. I've explained to her 200 times if I've explained once why she feels the way she does, what it means, that she is going to get better, but she has to participate, blah, blah, blah. And I'm feeling guilty about being frustrated about that. I just... You know, I'm the sort of person, if there's a problem, you think it through, you solve it to the best of your ability, and then you move on. As solved as the problem is going to be, you, you put that away and you just keep going on to the next problem. This is a problem that is not going to get solved. I'm not going to be able to explain her into feeling any sort of comfort or, or security about how she feels and that is incredibly frustrating and I feel feel guilty because I'm frustrated I I'm, it's like I'll, when I'm not with her I think to myself okay look just go in there go in the hospital room hold her hand you know say oh poor you you're going to get better don't worry and do all that stuff all that real nurturing stuff but when I get in her hospital room, I become angry. It's like, you've always been my mother who understands things. You've always taken charge. You've always been able to, you know, plow your way through life. And and now you're, def you're just defeated by age 
and infirmity. And that is really, really hard for me to deal with. So I'm feeling as if I need to just suck it up, create a dialogue or a monologue that I can just tell her over and over again and do it for her comfort, not for how I feel, but for how she feels. So I'm trying to I'm trying to make that happen, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm just selfish or if I'm just like a little addle brained and I'm not getting it that that's how you're supposed to act. I, I don't know if I'm just being babyish by being getting angry and frustrated. I don't know. I just know that I've got this huge problem. So um, that's what's been going on for me. And just lots of guilt um, and lots of kind of slapping myself for screwing things up one way or another. So I'm home tonight. I'm going to go in there. I'm gonna, After I get out of this bathtub, I'm going to lie in my bed with my phone. I'm going to watch as many of all y'all's videos as I have time for before I go to sleep. I miss you guys so much. I have not been watching videos and I'm wondering what's going on with, you know, Teresa Simply Twee Beings and her life with Brad and I'm wondering about Leanne and I'm wondering about Lori um, L. Davis, um, 49 L. Davis and I'm wondering about um, Lala and I'm wondering about, you know, Susan Sunshine and um, uh, Miss Susanie and Little Poet and Gabby and all of you, all of my friends, Marjorie, um, Rose, the marvelous artist who I've been following, and my friend Stacy Nicole, Derry Carpenter. I'm wondering about my friend Brenda and, you know, Every one of you who, um, Renee, um, all of you, um, Uma, I mean, all of you people who I love so much, and the ones that I didn't name who just didn't come to my head um, automatically, um, I'm, I'm really missing you guys, and I'm missing my little peeks into your lives, and I'm missing my feelings of connection with you, so I really, really, really need to watch videos and you know, um, uh, Stephanie Soft Pink Stardust, um, Stephanie um, Couponing Girl, I mean, I could just rattle, and Sue Pete, I mean, I could just rattle, 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 rattle names off of people who I'm missing. Uh, so, I need to reconnect with you, and soon, because you sustain me when I'm going through stuff like this. Um, so, I have one night to surf through a bunch of videos and, you know, Peter D., who I adore, my friend Carl over in, in the United Kingdom, and just, I just miss your lives, and I'm so tired of having my head buried in my own life and not coming up for air. So... I think I've rattled on enough, so I'm going to stop rattling, I'm going to refill this tub with some hot water, and I am going to pull myself up by my bootstraps. I ran I'm out of recording to... space, I hate it when I do that. Um, so, I'm going to keep calm, I'm going to carry on, and um, this too shall pass, unfortunately, because when it passes, that means my mama will no longer be with me. So... You know, maybe I just need to readjust my attitude and say, this is a really special time. This is a time I get to be with her. I get to hold her hand. I get to console her the way she consoled me. So, you know, may maybe I, what I need to do is just adjust my attitude. So that is what I'm going to try. And I will, um, I'm going to go watch as many of you as I can tonight. And I will check in again later when I have something else to talk about. Bye.